So we're going to have a look at the RRS rack and pinion and what sets it apart from everybody else's steering conversions. The very first thing to mention is it's a replacement for a steering box or a ram power steering system. Um, all of those were the best that you could get in their day, not anymore. Uh, the conventional power steer box has uh, a worm and sector shaft that as you move off the centre line comes out a mesh. A rack and pinion is constant mesh, so no matter where you are, you're not getting free play in the steering. The next thing of course is those particular gears in this have a modern ratio. So typically we're choosing ratios somewhere between 2.33 and 2.88 turns lock to lock. Whereas a factory manual steering system is about five and a quarter on this model. Uh, a power steer unit is just shy of four. Um, but all of that is outperformed by this and it feels like a modern Mustang 2017. Okay, so I'll point out some of the unique features of our rack and pinion system. Firstly, it's a center steer unit. So that means that all the activation of the steering drag bar is from the center of the rack. This allows us multiple configurations of where the inner tie rod ends are and more importantly is the inner tie rod position than the outer one. Um, you can balance the two but the inner one more than anything else controls bump steer. You can test this out by moving that inner position up and down and see the amount of change in bump steer readings. And bump steer is when it goes over bumps the wheels turn in and out because of inaccurate arcs of motion. So we've corrected all of that from the original. Okay, the big thing that sets our rack apart from anybody else's is this linear tracking device here. Uh, some years back we designed this and patented it. What it does is add a third stabilizing link to the drag bar because all the forces applied here need to be stable so that this unit in the middle has no deflection in it. That way you get more accurate steering, geometry, better feel to the steering. And so this patented design has a unique recirculating ball slider bearing on a hard chrome shaft. That way it's weather resistant, it's got proper dust seals on it. It's the sort of bearing that you would find in a lathe or something of that sort of nature. So if it, it's in harsh environments. The unique feature of that is it provides a third stabilizing link for the rack. So the drag bar is stabilized by the slider uh, housing in the middle and the pinion preload. It's really important when you design a critical component like a steering rack that it either matches but ideally exceeds the load bearing capacity of the original units. So if that's the case then you've got a nice, stable, long-lasting unit and that's part of the reason why we provide a five-year warranty. The mounting brackets, as you can see, are just simple bolt-ins. They bolt into original locations. So the load that's generated on the chassis rail is replicated. It also triangulates around the rail with a load spreader on the outer edge. Very simple installation. The other part we've just been developing is our own manufactured design of universal joints. So these are now forged stainless, load rated to 230 Newton metres uh, and they're a beautiful piece. So this is going to be a standard uh, RRS product range. So um, the next thing of course is it uses factory inner tie rod ends. This makes it very easy for serviceability. Uh, the mounting method is via two clamps to our adapters. This again makes it very easy to drop the rack in and out. 
you can use a standard power steer pump, you can use our aftermarket pump, or you can use our newly de developed electric power steer pump. Some of the critical factors in installing this, because we provide it as a complete kit with a column conversion kit, is making sure that the angles between the two universal joints are equal. Now it's as simple as this, once the column is connected and the two universals are connected and the column is basically hung from the dashboard, the most critical thing is the position in the firewall opening. As you can see, by moving that plate around, you can change this drive angle. These two angles have to be matched. It's about finding the sweet spot of the angle between the two universals. The way I normally do it is I cut a piece of paper that has a 42 degree angle on it. And that way you can slide it up and see how the angle of these two universals are going. And it's only to do, as you can see, the angles change with the positioning in the firewall opening. The next thing is where the steering forces are applied. The steering forces are across the widest section of the chassis rail, independent of the weight and braking points. So why would you go for anything less than RRS? Yeah.